proposed bill in Congress aims to cut the number of Americans burned in so-called flame jetting incidents. The phenomenon happens when a container holding flammable fuel can become something akin to a flamethrower. The injuries can be devastating. Anna Werner spoke with burn victims, investigators, and manufacturers to find out whether these containers can be made safer. Anna, good morning. Good morning. Well, this happens with all kinds of flammable liquids, things like the gasoline you use for your lawnmower, fireplace fuels, liquor, and even nail polish remover. Advocates say all of those could put you at risk, and they're missing what they say is a needed safety measure. The young woman you're about to meet says she suffered because of it. We want to warn you, some of the video you're about to see may be disturbing. In 2011, Aubrey Clark was 17 when a gasoline accident changed her life and lost her her voice. I went to a friend's house for her birthday party with a few friends. Then one of those friends got near an outdoor fire with a gasoline can. Clark was some 10 feet away, but says flames shot out of the can. It was like, uh, like a fire-breathing dragon or like a flamethrower. Like a fire-breathing dragon yeah. is the way that you remember it. Yeah. She was burned over 30% of her body and has had more than 25 surgeries, all due to a phenomenon investigators call flame jetting. Burn prevention advocates say to understand it, watch what appears to have happened to the blonde woman here at a bar in Moscow, as a bartender poured alcohol into flaming drinks. The woman reportedly was burned by the blast of flames, but survived. How does something like that happen? Adam St. John's team at the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives began investigating flame jetting events in 2010. The very first test that we did here in the lab, we had a flame jet over 10 feet long out of the container. Like in this test, similar to Aubrey Clark's experience, here using a mannequin. And all of a sudden, you'll see the jet encompass the victim. That's it, that fast. That's it. In slow motion, you can see how vapors coming out of a container can ignite, forcing flaming liquid to jet out several feet. We watch the vapors ignite, they pressurize, and they push out the liquid in the bottom of the container, well over five feet at this point. How long did this take? Less than a second. Less than a second? Yes. Something Aubrey Clark's mother, Tanya, an ATF employee herself, didn't know until St. John showed her the tests. When I saw it, firsthand, then I knew. When you actually saw this for yourself and realized that that's what happened to your daughter, I mean, what was that like for you? Horrific. Horrific. What outrages Clark and other burn victim advocates is, they say there's a simple solution to the flame jetting problem, metal or plastic screens known as flame arresters. This technology's been around forever. It stops the flame from, from migrating through the openings in that screen. In fact, when St. John and his team ran the same flame jetting tests using containers with flame arresters. We saw this blue flame go back in here, but now we don't. No, it never makes it beyond that flame mitigation device which to you shows that this works, right? Prevents We've never had a flame jet in any of the testing we did with a flame mitigation device. Manufacturers say it isn't that simple. The Portable Fuel Containers Manufacturers Association would not go on camera, but on its website says the containers are entirely safe when used properly. And in a statement it told us, designs suggested in the past failed and in many cases caused additional safety issues. But California Congressman Mike Thompson says manufacturers' efforts have taken far too long. I think they missed the boat, and in doing so, uh, I think they put the American public at risk. The manufacturers disagree, pointing out they're supporting work by a committee to establish a voluntary standard where workable designs have just been created. But Thompson says that committee has been meeting for nearly a decade. He's introduced a bill for the government to require flame mitigation devices in those containers. This is an easy fix. We ought to be able to fix it. We're going to fix it and we're going to save lives.
Now, the Manufacturers Association says it supports Thompson's legislation and will adopt standards put forth, whether voluntary or required. Meanwhile, some companies have adopted their own flame mitigation technology, and they're not waiting for that voluntary standard. Mm -hmm. For instance, this company, No Spill, they've now put out a new can that they're starting to sell. It's not this can, but it'll look very much like this one. And basically, they developed, they took four years, their company's president told me, to develop their own kind of flame mitigation technology, which is something inside of a can that'll look almost identical to this one. Um, and uh, they say that's to enhance safety. Mm -hmm. But one thing manufacturers point out is that they say it will never be safe to have gasoline near a fire. Mm -hmm. So yeah. people should never assume that just because there is technology, um, even if all cans have it someday, that you can be safe. And that seems to be the most important thing. But what's the name of that company again? So this is No Spill, and they just actually put out uh, press releases saying that they're going to start selling that, or they are selling that uh, in the last month or so. Yeah, I think okay. you saved lives today, Anna, because I think a lot of people didn't even know that was possible. Looking at that video is very jarring. Yeah, yeah we didn't know it was possible. Yeah. And it's really shocking how fast it yes. happens, yeah. just in a second. And the injuries are so devastating. Anna, thank you so thank much. You.